I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 318, where I'm going to show you how to account for a receipt within 14 days of month end to show in the next month. I have here my model where I have a list of transfers, and they're coming from a warehouse, and they're ending up at a warehouse, and I have a delivery date. Also, I want this data to then be translated up into a year-month matrix as shown up here which is by warehouse and by part code. If it is coming into the warehouse, then it's a transfer in. That means the destination warehouse. It's a transfer in. It's a transfer out from the warehouse that it's coming from, as shown here in this column. And I want to only show up here in this matrix those orders that are happening in the future. And I also want to make sure that if the arrival date is within the last 14 days of the month, then I want to have it actually be put in the following month's inventory or transfer in or out. I don't want it showing in this current month's or the month that it is shown as arriving here. So there's this 14 day, the 14th of a month or 14 day threshold. It's not the 14th of a month because in March, uh, for example, if it was arriving the 15th, I would still want it to show in March's inventory, but if it was arriving, say, the 16th or the 17th even, I would probably still want it to show in the inventory, but if it was arriving the 18th, then I would want it to show in the next month's inventory because, again, I want it to be, I want there to be this 14-day threshold that says if it's within those 14 days, and go ahead and move it to the following month. It's just a business requirement that we have. So how can I make this happen? Well, first off, what I would do is I would go out and write a basic formula that would simply say, is my system date greater than or equal to today? And if it is, then go ahead and give me a one out here. And that is what I do for when that is true. And then my transfer quantity that I'm then calculating is, that if, if this is a one, then go ahead and bring back the order quantity that I have listed here. So again, just another Boolean formula. But herein is a question, well, what place or what month should I then put this order in? This one right here should go actually in to January of 2021. So there's even a further complication that requires me to even go into the next year, not only just the next month, but into the next year. So how can I handle this? So what I would do actually is I would actually go out and just write my Boolean or I would write some logic that said month to place helper is equal to well is my end of month right here is the end of the month of the month that is listed here on this date is it within 14 days? So how I'm doing that is I'm using the end of month function here in Quantrix, which takes any day and then it calculates the last day of the month, X months out. And if I put a zero here, it actually returns the end of the month that I'm in. So if I were to go here and change this format really quick, you would see what end of the month function does actually. You can see that it's giving me 1231 of 20 here. It's giving me 1031 of 20 here. If I were to change this date and to make it, uh, say I were to make it 11, like so, you would see that it gives me the end of the month of 1130 of 20 here. So this end of the month function goes ahead and tells me how many, or tells me the last day of the month of this system delivery date when I have a value of zero in it. Well, what I want to do is I want to then subtract out this delivery date, and that will then tell me, if I were to format this as a number, this tells me that I actually have four days within until the end of the month in this example here. So what I want to do is I actually would want to say, well, that should go into the following month because this value here is less than 14. Remember, that was my business requirement. So what I would do is I would put this in parentheses and I would put less than 14. So if I do that, then this is what is going to show up 
in the following month, this item here. If I were to change this to, say, to the 2nd of November, I would expect this to go away because I would want this to show up in uh, this month's listed inventory. Now that I've established kind of this flag or this operator here, let me go back here and put in the 26th, if you will. Now I want to know, well, what is like the original delivery month? Okay. And, you know, I can go in here and say it's, it's November here and it's October and so on here, but I know that I'm going to need to offset <clears throat> that delivery month by some increment, usually by one. Okay. And how I do that is I have a date dim table as well that is by year and month, and it has my indexes going across the top. It also has a date of when that month starts. Okay, So what I would want to do here is I would want to go out and say, well, find the month start of this delivery month that's listed here. Pretty simple, I think. So I would go here and say, this is equal to EO month sys delivery date minus one plus one in order to get the delivery date the first day of the month that I'm delivering I'm actually using my end of month function and I'm subtracting the end of month back one month with this minus one and then I'm adding one that gets me to the first day of the next month excellent so once I do that I'm also going to add a little bit of an indicator here that says if my month to place helper or arrives in the future, if it is equal to zero, then go ahead and just give me a blank because I don't want to be accounting for anything that is in the future. Okay. So now what happens is I say, okay, if this is happening on November 1st of 2020, then what is my year month index? Because this date doesn't really co coincide to anything up here. And if I then need to offset it by one, it would be better if I used an index. So then I go to delivery date year and I simply say delivery date year here is equal year month index is equal to select. I want to select my year month index here where my month start date is equal to my delivery date month start found here. And what happens is it brings back 23. And if I were to scroll over here, I would see that indeed 11 1 of 20 is uh, index 23. And that's the 23rd uh, year month combination within my, uh, I guess, my timeline of year month, if you will. So when do I want this to arrive? Well, I actually want it to arrive this one plus whatever my month to place helper says. And so that then says that it's going to arrive in period 24 or in year month index 24, which is one after November. And the reason again why is because this is 1126. It's within 14 days of the month end. So I want to have it show up in the next month. If I were to put 16 in here, because I think there's 30 days in November. So then it, Sure, it arrives in the future, but it's not within those 14 day time period. So I am going to have it then be coming in in November, which is when it's supposed to arrive, which is your month index 23. That's how I would kind of get where it needs to go into what month. And then what happens here is up in this matrix is I have some logic written where I say, well, for transfers in, I want to go ahead and just select from this table down below where my year month index that I have here is equal to my year month index that is found over here. I want you to bring in those items for my transfer in and for my transfer out. It would be just the opposite with a negative here in front of it. And of course my using as links my part codes found here. Well, it links these part codes because it's items here to these part codes here. And my warehouse is linking either this destination warehouse for those that where the transfer is in uh, to this warehouse or where it's coming from is from this trend from the this warehouse to the warehouse here and that is for a transfer out as you can see I have that syntax written here and the reason why I can use this select and use the year month index is again because my year and months are linked across the matrices so that's how I would 
make it so that if you have a receipt within 14 days of month end, have it show in the next month. I realize there may be easier ways to do it, but I felt like this way today was uh, really good because it helped me just step through it. And I was actually developing this with a new person who was new to Quantrix. So I wanted to show him the capabilities and really show him a best practice that when you're doing something a little bit complex, yeah, you could we could have jammed all of these formulas into one formula, but sometimes the best thing to do is just to step through it until you get to the answer that you want. And it makes it easier to debug. And actually, I find it quite enjoyable. If you have any questions about Quantrix, I really do hope that you'll reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and ask me those questions. It makes my day anytime I hear from anyone within the Quantrix community asking for help about Quantrix. I hope that you'll join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority because I absolutely love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.